Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Chappaqua Library News. My name is Joan Kuhn, I'm the program coordinator. And right now I am videotaping this program from the beautiful courtyard at the library. And um, you'll see a lot of interesting things soon. So, and now I would like to welcome the director of the library, Andrew Barber. Welcome, Andrew. Hi, Joan, thanks for having me this morning. As Joan said, my name is Andrew Farber. I'm the director here at the Chappaqua Library. I wanted to start by thanking the Chappaqua residents for the, their overwhelming support in our positive vote on our budget and the election of one of our board members, Shoray Anand. Thank you again. Uh, we could not be the library we are without all of your support along with our great staff. I have exciting news to share. The library is now open for extended browsing hours. We're open Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., Fridays from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., and Saturdays from 10 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. We're also extremely excited to announce that our children's room is finally open. If you haven't had the chance, please stop by and check out the children's room. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our new head of library services, Tao Nguyen. Hi, Andrew. Thanks for the introduction. Joan, I'm so happy to have I'm this so conversation happy. with you today. <laughs> and I'm so happy you're here. And I'm really glad to join us at a time where we can do this in the courtyard and outside to enjoy in Chappaqua in the springtime because everything is just so beautiful. It and is. I think it's very an optimistic time for the community. So I know, uh, Andrew, you have a couple of questions you want to ask Tao. So I will sort of move over and you and Tao could have a little chat. Thank you, Joan. Thanks, Joan. Hi, Tao. It's a pleasure to have you on Library News. It's, I think your first time uh, on, on camera with us here uh, in this video. Um, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so I am um, a librarian and I got my master's in Albany. And prior to joining Chappaqua, I was the assistant director at the Curtin Free Library. I've worked at many different libraries all throughout Westchester. I was a children's librarian. I was an adult um, programming and outreach coordinator. And I'm very excited to join the team here. Thank you. We are very excited to have you here as well. I know you've been here for about a month now. Um, would you like to share with us any of the projects you've begun working on or anything that you're excited uh, to be diving into here at the library? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, this is a great transition period for the Chappaqua Library. You know, Andrew joined us um, six months ago and I'm just joining the team now. Um, and we're going through a big transition. I think everyone in the community is, but our library is starting to um, delve into a new strategic plan at this time. Um, and that's, I think, what I'm most excited about is to really be here from the, at a time where we're building from the ground up. Um, and it's, it's really exciting to get to know all of the different departments and all of the organizations from the board to the friends. Um, Joan has been really lovely in trying to introduce me to all of the community groups here in Chappaqua. And um, I think that'll be really exciting to get to know our users, um, the people that we serve in the community. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited about that. Excellent. Uh, well, thank you again. Um, and now Joan, I believe you had uh, some programs to discuss. Right, I, am, I have lots to talk about, but first I wanna say how excited I personally am, because as you know, every time I get a new program, I like to have to discuss it with someone. And Andrew seems to be always, because he's so new, he has to go to so many meetings, I need somebody to bounce ideas off. So I have been thrilled that you are here and I'm able to always pop into your office Absolutely. and talk to you about yes. Yes. all the upcoming events. Yes. It's been, we're, we're very lucky in this library. Yes. Um, I want to, again, as Andrew said, thank everybody for the uh, support you did show in voting for us. And, um, and I think we have such a wonderful staff here at the library and Andrew's doing such a great job pulling us all together. Well, yay, the landscaper stopped. stopped. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's really been, it's been so much fun. It's like a whole new world here at the library. So um, I want to thank everybody. Thank I'm you, really Joan. excited. Thank you, and just stay here because you know I'll have to bounce <laughs> ideas off you. So um, uh, Andrew, do you want to talk at all about the, the construction? Originally we were going to be in one of the rooms with all the construction stuff behind us. 
so you could see what it, what it looks like at the library. But then Tao had this idea, it's such a beautiful day, we should go outside. We're in the courtyard and it's just beautiful. Absolutely. Well, our children's room, as you heard, is uh, open to the public. We've finally been able to finish the internal construction. Uh, we still have a little bit more work for the children's room on the outside. Uh, sunshades will be coming. Uh, we are hoping soon to start our new roof restoration project. Uh, our roof, as many of you have probably heard over the years, is in a, um, a state of, of a, a poor state at this point. <laughs> needs immediate repair. Uh, so we are working on engaging a contract uh, to get the roof restored. Um, as you know, our parking lot is also in poor condition and will need to be worked on. Uh, we're not sure on the timeline for that. Um, and then once the uh, theater has been emptied of all of the temporary children's materials and shelving, we will need to renovate the uh, theater as well. So although we are lucky to have the children's room open, uh, work at the Chappaqua Library will be continuing uh, at least in the short term. Right. I've been getting so many queries about when the theater will be open for programming, and I hate to keep telling them, I'm sorry, I don't know when, but there's so much work yet to do, so we all have to understand that and sort of just um, hope for the best that all go, it all goes smoothly, but it should, and um, we should be in the library in the near future, how we say. So now I just want to mention some of the upcoming programs we're having at the library. Even though we are not in the space we would like to be in, the library has been extremely active. The children's room, as you know, is, has started on May 17th, and they will continue with their online programs, which is Friday's Movers and Shakers and Baby Zoom, the storybook with a Christina, which you have to register to get on the video, and that will be continue cooking for kids with the number four. Again, you have to register for it. Um, that will start in June 1st, and the last meeting for the school year for young critics and fading pages and parent-child book groups. The new programs coming up will be um, some courtyard story times, and that will be, as I said, in the courtyard. Summer reading registration begins June 1st, and the Family Dragon Boat Festival, where registration is required, will be on June 12th. The young adult um, area of the library. Oh, and soon they'll be able to see that gorgeous room. Yes. Oh, and we should talk about how gorgeous <laughs> the children's room is. Yes, we have a bright new shiny children's room, right, yes. Andrew? Yeah, <laughs> it is. As I, we should say that um, even though it's not fully functional, it's absolutely the feeling that you get when you walk in is spectacular. Yeah. A very welcoming and very open mm -hmm. and it's just lovely i think everybody in this community will be thrilled about the progress and the and, and what it looks like so and then the young adult programs which i'll read in a minute that young adult area is spectacular yeah that's one of my favorite places in the library <laughs> <laughs> you know kathy's done a really good job bringing all of her like house plans over to the library right. and really making it like a home for the teens and yeah you know our pages are already hanging out there and i think they're they're really enjoying themselves it'll be a big hangout place yes. and i noticed she has a big fish tank yeah so if you're <laughs> if you have just free time and you want to get the peace and quiet that you feel by viewing a fish swim, I think that's the place to be. And I'm sure as during the day when the young adults aren't there, adults could go in there and sort of just chill out. For yeah, a while. check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'll be nice. It's a lovely space. Yeah. And the young adult programs that are going to be occurring in June, Thursday, June 10th at four o'clock, she will have nail art for teens. So I guess that that's a big thing, nail yes. polishing. You Yes, how creative. Not, not for me, but it's so I'll, I'll have to stop by and see what designs they're doing. <laughs> right. And on June 15th at 7 o'clock, creating a compelling college uh, application, registration is required. And on Wednesday, June 23rd at 3.30 in the courtyard, she's having Drag Queen Story Hour uh, for teens for ages 13 and up. And this is a series of programs that are slowly coming into the library, these drag queen story hours. And I'm glad to see that the young adult librarian has um, jumped on the bed. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. And Kathy was sort of educating me about it, how they're actually gonna use, cause it's for teens, they're gonna use a young adult novel and they're actually gonna read excerpts from it. So yeah. I think that's yeah. really exciting. 
when, um, and it's all for, you know, Pride is June, uh, June is Pride Month. Right. So we're celebrating Pride today. That's great. Um, I know uh, the former director and I had gone to many direct uh, meetings for the American Library Association and the Drag Queen Story mm -hmm. Hours were populating throughout uh, the United States. Yeah. So yep. glad to see that we're going to be part of that. So adult programs are also extremely busy. I will start on the 27th because that's in a few days from now. And we are having, uh, we continue with our series, Jazz at Lincoln Center. Uh, again, it's a, Zoom, it's a Zoom program. We're having the music of John Lewis and with Winton Marsalis and the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. There is no time. What you will do is you register for it and I will send you a link. And that link is good until Lincoln Center takes it down. That's okay. the only way I can say it. Uh -huh. People who have been coming to this series have all these fabulous links. And I don't know when they're taking them down. Yeah. Um, so that's all I have to say. But that's nice. It's like asynchronous. You can tune in at any time. At any time. Over it's... Memorial Weekend, you know, just put it in the background. Yes. Yeah, I, that's I, lovely. And I would assume people who have a lot of links yeah. are now going to listen to it all the time. Right. So. This is a little perk that we have uh, that I found when I went to an ALA conference, oh, Lincoln good. Center. And I've been working with Cedric and he has been a fabulous. He's also a jazz musician. Oh, so. okay. And he's in charge of jazz at Lincoln Center. Um, and on Saturday, June 5th, I know it's an odd time. We usually don't have these kinds of lectures, but on June 10th, there is going to be a solar eclipse. And the solar eclipse means that the moon will be between the earth and the sun. And the way the moon will be coming up, it will be blocking almost all of the sun except a ring. And that's called an annulus. So this is an annulus or it's called an annular solar eclipse. And that's going to be happening on June 10th. So on June 5th at two o'clock, which is this Saturday, we're having Hudson Valley meteorologist, Joe Rayo. Many of you might so know cool. him from News Channel 12. Mm -hmm. He was the big man there. I used to look at him to find out when my kids were going to school <laughs> if it was a snow day. Anyway, so he is going to explain what the solar or annular solar eclipse is on June 10th. Um, and I don't know the time. He didn't offer the time and I've been looking on the net. I know it's in the morning, but that's all I know. Okay, okay. And Joan, are we supposed to look directly at it? I'm not sure how this is. I think on June 5th at two o'clock, you should all come to the Chapel Hall Library, register on the website, and you will know exactly what you're supposed to do. <laughs> on Wednesday, June 9th, we're having with the um, Chapel Hall Garden Club, which I thank them again, Life in the Studio, Inspiration and Lessons on Creativity, June 9th at two o'clock. And this is an odd time also, we usually have those programs at 7.30. And I've, this woman's name is Frances Palmer, um, and she is a potter as well as a gardener. And Frances, if you look on her website, amazing woman, her pottery is beautiful, but very pricey. And her plants are exquisite. So I just wanna thank the um, Chappaqua Garden Club, and I hope you will all go and register for the program. Of course, all these programs are Zoom, we don't know when we're going to be um, virtual in person. Next program is June 15th at seven o'clock. We're having a program with food historian, Sarah Wasberg, and it's going to be called Cooking by the Book, mm. Celebrity Cooks, Cookbookery and the Changing Landscape of American Cuisine. This is my and type of she program. will discuss. <laughs> she, I, I've been speaking to her on the phone. I haven't Zoomed with her. And she is a lovely, funny woman. And I think you will all enjoy uh, this little break. She will discuss celebrity chefs, both obscure and familiar from all over the country and across the decades. Again, you have to register for the program on Zoom. And then we are having a cooking demonstration. We had um, a program with the Korean um, Spirit Club, and now we're having a, which was a lantern meet, uh, mm -hmm. program, which was exquisite. Everyone who came is was thrilled and they even purchased more kits so they could uh, continue making lanterns because I suggested that this might be cute in the summertime if you put a little lamp in them. And so everybody was saying, ah, wow. summer decorations. 
Beautiful. So yeah. uh, don't forget, all of our programs are videotaped and on the net and on the web, our website. And if you want to learn about these things and how to to learn and purchase anything, you could always go back to our archives and find out. Anyway, they're going to be doing a program called A Taste of Korea. Learn to pronounce, and I'm not even going to attempt it, but it's a potato starch noodles with various vegetables with step-by-step -step mm -hmm. instructions. What she will do is once you register, uh, at some point I will send you all the instructions and um, she will then demonstrate how to do this. So that is on Tuesday, June 22nd at seven o'clock. And then we have our, again, a June Jazz at Lincoln Center program. Again, no time, but you will get the link. And that will be Overflowing with Style, it's called, mm -hmm. with Winton Marsalis and Jazz at Lincoln Center. So I hope you all come. And again, I want to welcome Tao to our library family. Thank you. And I want to say thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Good luck with everything that's happening because you're the one in charge. <laughs> so, and thank you all for coming to the program. And we'll see you again at the next Chapel Library News. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.